Sean Sport in podcast form. Well, the richest game in football took place uh, yesterday with Southampton getting the Bickies over Leeds. Now, they're playing to get from the Championship League back into the Premier League. Okay. And so the winner walked away with £100 million. Ooh. Wow. What, somebody just hands them a cheque at the end of it or that's what they uh, can gain once they're back in the EPL? Yeah, so they're entitled to that at the start of the season to be able to have their club up and running and buy new players to be able to compete. Oh, they get a, get a little grant. Wow, <laughs> imagine how grant. overflowing the stationery cupboard would be. I know, right? <laughs> Not like here. Staplers for everybody. <laughs> you don't even know what the stationery cupboard is. No, I would never clue. <laughs> <laughs> Only because he has no need for stationery. I don't know where it is anymore, do you? Uh, no, because they moved everything around. Oh, it's a bloody sales. They're trying mm. to hide it from us. Mm. They are. They get I'll like go through the sometimes. cupboards later. He could. Mm. Uh, <laughs> by the way, if you're following Wrexham FC, they got promoted as well. I so know. they're up yeah. to uh, Division 3, which is League 1. League it's great, one. isn't it? And what I love is that there were some quite big names, you know, uh, that actually attached themselves to that team and said, you know what, we're going to play for less money mm. and we want to be part of this journey. And as they get closer and closer to this fairy tale, which mm. seems like it's been written in Hollywood, you'll mm. get more big names going, mm. hey, I want to jump onto this. For sure. Sean, this could be unbelievable, the it, fact that they could get to where they're going to get. Nathan, to get to the championship, which is the next level Imagine. up. I just Amazing, you can't even it? see it. And you know that the the guys came in, um, Rob McElhenney and... Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. <laughs> they need to build a whole new stadium. or Well, yeah, part yes. of it. Yeah. They're going to have what? a field from... Pack, yeah. It's going to be packed But the, the money that's coming in from Disney+, Plus, mm. from TikTok, from all their mm. sponsors, Aviation from their gym. own brands that they're putting into it <laughs> yeah. as well. The, biz, the model that they have done there is so unbelievable. And then later on, if they do end up getting to where they, you know, we think we're gonna get, they're going to get, the movie... Yes. Afterwards, where they can play themselves because mm. they're <laughs> actors. <laughs> Disney Plus, check it out. Welcome to Rexham. It, it is all coming together. Mitchell Stark's team, the Cole Cutter Knight Riders, got the bickies in the IPL grand final last night, and he was player of the match, right? Was he? And um, he, he, so his contract in the IPL was $4.3 million. Yeah. But oh. he, he didn't really, he wasn't having a great season until, but he came good at the end, obviously. Well, in the finals, he's yeah. been fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. When, it, when it mattered, he was the one who how got their team over the line. For, that's for how long again? It's six weeks, though. Oh, I cannot. I cannot. That <laughs> seems like, that he just it seems a... like it, should be, it seems like it's criminal that they, he can make that much money for he, that him, much time. Yeah, him and his wife just bought uh, a, a place in New South Wales for about, was it, they just sold their property for over $7 million and Oh, then they it's just a two-bedroom flat. They yeah. bought one for what? <laughs> I think it was... I'm going to say, like, nearly 20. Am I going to just make that up? Harry's so just looking for it at the moment. His partner's Alyssa Healy, right? Uh, yep. Yes. Yeah, Who's the... a gun. Yeah. Um, but they're so that's amazing. Like, well, that's just three weeks of IPL, isn't yeah. it? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's so good. Oscar Piastri came second in the Monte Carlo Grand Prix. And if you've been to Monaco before, it's such a tight circuit. And we watch it on TV and yeah. stuff. So if you're at the front of the grid, unless you, um, you stuff up, like there's been, there was a big yeah, smash. Yeah, overtaking opportunities are limited, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. big de- and, and the thing about Oscar Piastri, it's really strange that the Aussies do particularly well there. So, of yeah. course, Mark Webber won there a number of times over. Dan Ricciardo's won there. But when you're going along this track here, it's very difficult to... Everyone uh, look at this. No, sorry, mate. <laughs> if you've been to Monaco, <laughs> you'll know. You know, at home, just look at this now. <laughs> it's bloody past to get. It's really difficult to get past someone on a skateboard, let alone on an F1. Can so I, I tell don't you? See how this is a really great track. We saw someone that's obviously been in a crash, and the wheels and everything was yeah. taken off. This once you get rid of all the superfluous thing around this car, it's a jet ski. <laughs> it is the size of a jet ski. Mm, it is. Yeah, that's crazy. It is. Sean Sport in podcast form. Seabass is in the house. It's great news because she's followed all the sport over the weekend. In fact, she's working 24-7 mm. from Friday through to she's Sunday. She's a career woman. That's what career women mm. do, Sean. Oh, my God, for the money. Absolutely, Seabass. <laughs> hey, Seabass, first of all, Friday you were at the Dockers. You are working there. Yeah. How did you find that game? Um, look, I thought Dockers stole that draw, if that makes sense, because they had so many fumbles, so many mistakes, just, yeah. And I feel like, I feel bad, as the media, we really leaned into their accuracy, um, and I myself wrote an article about having the yips and how you beat them, mm. um, and I think they overcame that a little bit, uh, but yeah, hey, it was weird, it was when, a weird feeling in the change rooms afterwards. When you're writing um, an article, have you got your laptop on? Are you writing pen and paper? What are you doing? Shorthand. The typewriter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! 
<laughs> like, how do you do it? Yeah, definitely voice record and then you transcribe it. So oh, you voice and, record. Yes. So you're there, like talking to yourself and like, oh, no, no, no. I don't talk to myself. But obviously, if we chat, I get an interview with yeah. you and then I go and I listen to all the quotes and I type them up and then I look at them and I kind of, then you pin, pick what the important parts of the story are. Oh, See, so I think you've got to look at it all more so in a positive way because the third quarter was horrendous. So you go back and depict that. But then also the fact that they came back and should have won it, should have won it. And then people go, oh, they stole two points. But you go back to the way the season's been run. Mm. They should have beaten Carlton. They should have beaten Port Adelaide. But everyone moves on and just puts them down as losses. Mm. So, you know, sometimes it goes against you. Sometimes it goes for you. They were 24 points down. The funny thing was seeing all the people leaving I know. when they got down. Yeah, so one of our friends did that, got yeah. back to Gosnell's and found out it was a draw. I want to know, <laughs> what do you think of Sean Darcy's free kick? Well, uh, if... From a supporter's point of view, you would want to um, follow Matthew Nichols as the umpire gave away the free yeah. kick mm. to the car mm. and make sure he never breathes another breath again. <laughs> That's what you do as a supporter because you can't pay them. But they've been five of those paid this year, so mm. they've been play- paying them this year. Yeah, so it's not a kicks. new thing. It's, it's not a new a thing, but it doesn't make it a match. good thing for the g- for the game. No. I just don't he see it. He got it in, didn't he? He got it straight in, yeah. eh? Oh, we would have had to release him from the contract. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. And the, and the comeback began and Hayden Young slotted one and uh, Jeremy Sharp had a shot to win the game mm. and he was only like 25 metres out so they could have easily walked away with that victory and the roof would have ripped off the joint. There so the people, that, the people that left early, oh. right? The people that left early and then found out on the way home that it was a draw. Does it really matter that you were there or not? Would you be kicking yourself? Because you're finding out the result anyway tight, and you're nearly home. Tight. <laughs> Tight ending to a match. My, my brother left early and he just went over the cam field. Oh, and watched on the big screen. Oh, well. And you can hear the noise in the background. And you can drink like, full strength beer to that's deal exactly with right. it. Yeah. yeah. The West Coast Eagles yesterday were pathetic. Mm. Like, awful. They're losing every away game. It's The average is over 10 goals now, but it's six, uh, 99 points yesterday. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the bonus was it wasn't 100, yeah, so that's, that's right. a win. That's if you're looking for silver linings. Yeah, look, they're worse lost this season so yes. far and I think it is starting to get concerning about their travel um, ac- like they're just not great on the road are they what no. is it it's a great time to bond as a team it's a time to escape your kids Do or your trust family balls. like trust yeah balls. like I loved an away trip when I was playing I thought it was a great time to escape so uh, I mean with so many away team <laughs> so many away games for them this season yes. like they need to get that sorted really quickly what was the deal with you uh, flying and business class seat yeah, don't be silly. It's netball. No. No. I was lucky to get an exit seat sometimes. That was great. But apart from that, no. Like, So no. will you just sit on the aisle and stick your legs out? Yeah, Is yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, lay across my teammates, just spread out. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever not get, not, not, were you ever not able to play because you got your knees rammed by a trolley? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was one time not allowed into Qantas Club because I was wearing sporting apparel. Oh, yeah. And so oh, you're flying away for netball. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to geez, sporting apparel. You can wear high vis, yes. but like, you can't wear sporting Put my apparel. my ball gown and my dress on yeah. to Travel over to Victoria. <laughs> the interesting thing, this will be uh, a, a funny stat. I don't know if it exists, but the Eagles lost by almost 100, right? Yeah. So call it 100. They are likely to start favourites against St Kilda this it's week. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Well, because they're home. And do you know what? I hope Crowd Advantage can do that for yeah. you. Like, it really lifts the roof. I don't know. I mean, the most I played in front of was probably 15, 16,000. I don't know. What's it like when there's 50, 60, 70,000 screaming every time you touch the ball, Sean? Yeah, it, can, it has a huge influence, and particularly here. And I said to Nat, um, um, it's the a West Coast Eagles crowd rather than, supporters yeah. go ballistic. Mm, they go ballistic, yeah. and they they go at every call, every decision, every moment of the game. And that has an influence on the game, negatively and positively. So um, I'm sure that will be a really impactful thing this weekend. <laughs> I tell you what, if I was playing football in that dimension where I play football... <laughs> And I go down, I pick up the ball and everyone just starts cheering and making noise. I put it back down and think I did something wrong. <laughs> I go, what? Oh, it's not a good feeling when it goes no, the other way. No. Oh, tell you. God. And let's talk about the fever. You're working at the game on the weekend yesterday. Yes. Um, I tipped the fever the win by at least 10 goals and oh, they slapped me in the call. face. Yeah. Uh, look, first loss to the season and talking to Dan Ryan, the coach afterwards, I think it's really easy to blow it up. Um, but when you think about it, you know, they won the week before by yes. one goal. They've now um, lost their first game. But it was against the Vixens. Yeah, and right. the Vixens have really announced themselves.
itself as a and great they, team they this season. They were coming off a loss too, so it was like that resolved them. Yes. They, they, were, they were very good yesterday. Yeah, look, Vixens put out a different lineup. They're missing their wing defence at the moment. So they put Emily Mannix um, out into to goal defence and pushed Joe Weston, who's one of the best Australian defenders, you know, to live. So she's out there. She's against Alice Teague Neal. She shut her down well. And then yep. poor Shanice Beckford, who's about this tall, is playing against Emily Mannix, who's just a little bit shorter than me. So getting the ball over her high yeah. hands, they really struggle with slowed their attacking end up significantly. And then a lot of with, turnovers lot too. Of, yeah. And then mm. Vixens, they just don't give you opportunities to win the ball back. Yeah, they're right. not putting specky balls in the air. Mm. They're not doing anything too fancy. They're just chipping it around, which is really frustrating play. But uh, yeah, I, I think a good time for Fever to win. This is round seven. So they've played everyone now. Now they'll go back and play everyone else again and really set themselves up for finals. Can you be a really tall and have short arms? <laughs> yeah, T-Rex. The T-Rex thing. Yeah, like T-Rex thing. Well, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? There's yeah. I mean, I guess guys... there's somebody, yeah. Because one, the one thing in the NBA, right, they measure your height, but they're really big on your wingspan. Wind wingspan, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you can be... Spirit fingers. Yes. <laughs> I mean, your, your sleeves are always down over your hands. <laughs> hey, Caitlin, the most important thing we have to ask you for today mm. is do you know what a papazan chair is? Oh, I used to have a papazan chair. Of course, what are you talking did. about? Yeah. Of course. Because Sean had never, never heard the Amy, term. That's never heard you're the rich. term. And Harry rich. never heard rich. the term. Yeah. Oh, you, so you, you think papazan's for the poor people? Well, yes. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the every man's chair. I think I got my papazan chair off like a verge pickup. Like yes. I went round and got a verge know. pickup. Yeah. Where you would sell them? No. Yes. No. Yeah. 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 Loved it. Best. Papazan chair. Mm. Sure. Having a nap it's in a, a papazan. It's a new word mm. for McManus. Actually, mm. I got sent a um uh, a message from Sam, who does all of our social media, and mm. Tracy had sent us a message and said, "My dad owned the Kane Furniture Store in Kalgoorlie, mm. what and was it we called? used to deliver the moon chairs to Hay Street, etc." Well, uh, the only one I can remember is Kane World. Kane World. Kane World. It's a world of Kane. It's a world of Kane. <laughs> <laughs> and there's and, nothing in that world you didn't want. <laughs> and when when they're saying Hay Street, they mean to the brothels. Oh. Oh, I would think. I would think. Oh, that would. That's, that's what, where the brothels yes. were. What were they doing in the moon chairs? Well, mm. I think we know. God, we, maybe you have been in a are those, <laughs> are those <laughs> covers <laughs> removable or washable? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> don't mean? shine a blue light on them, that's for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Sebas. Sebas. We'll talk again next week. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.